In this video I'm going to do a little boat tour. A few folks have been asking for it in the comments, so let's uh, go look around my westerly discus. Sea Dream McLeod is a 1979 westerly discus. It was built in England um, and it was sailed over here I think in the early 80s um, to Vancouver and then the last owners had it for about 27 years and then Hannah and I bought it off them. As you can see looking around, Sea Dream McLeod has been really well looked after. Um, the previous owner did this wonderful varnishing work all throughout the whole cabin here and has kept it up to a really nice standard which we're continuing now. So here's looking aft. I'm standing right near the V-berth and the, the head. Um, you can see there's a one bench here. This turns into a single berth um, with, a, uh, with a lee board that you can install. And then we have the L seating area here. Um, this also turns into a berth though since um, the boat was built this nice diesel heater was added and it makes it so that this uh, facade here can't come all the way out so it's currently not acting as a double berth as it usually would have um, but I'm going to change that up I'm going to probably cut this uh, down here and make it so that at least portion of it can come and a short person could sleep here and uh, a regular kind of tall person could sleep in this berth right here um, throughout the cabin there's tons of storage there's all these little cabins or cabinets right here. We can keep all kinds of stuff and lots of room for books. It's nice tall shelves right here so stuff doesn't fly off in rough seas. Um, lots of tons of lighting on the boat um, so it feels really cozy. Um, we've got these nice little kerosene lamps. I haven't really used them much but I lit one up yesterday and it was really cozy. And here's a view from the V-Birth looking forward. Right here I just have a little uh, oil heater that I have, in, have uh, on through the winter. And a uh, dehumidifier. This is a desiccant style dehumidifier. And it works really well where I have it so this fan is blowing this way with this heat here. And it it blows the uh, the heat right on up into the V-berth and keeps everything dry. And looking at the table here, it's one of your classic swing up tables. These arms come out so it does it on both sides. Um, there's a little, a little wee liquor cabinet here which is kind of cool. You can store stuff in there. Um, batteries are down here, tools here. Again, more, lots of good storage over on this side. Underneath all the seats, there's all kinds of storage as well. Um, it's a bolt-on keel, so looking down here, um, you can't really see them here. But you can see the bolts down there, um, and it's a, a uh, cast iron keel and so there's no fiberglass around it um, and it makes it so that if you do hit bottom um, there's not gonna be a whole lot of damage as long as you don't hit hit it too hard no fiberglass to repair anything just maybe a little scratch in the cast iron keel so here's the galley um, kind of a retro stove here which we might be replacing um, sooner than later but it's got a cool little grill um, it's called a flavel um, and it's got an oven and everything and it works just fine, but um, it's uh, getting a little antiquated and parts are really hard to come by. Um, and yeah, lots of storage here. Um, storage underneath here. This is also access to the side of the engine in here. Can't really see it right now. And the uh, there's pressure water. Um, there is a an ice box here that's really poorly insulated. It's really deep. Um, but I'm planning on installing a fridge um, sooner than later. Looking over here, we see the nav station, which generally isn't used too much these days with the electric charts or electric chart plotters being available. Um, and yeah, then down in here, um, here's the OM636 Mercedes diesel engine. It's the original engine, and it really runs great. So I was a little hesitant on buying a boat with such an old engine, but the fact that most of the boats I looked at that had been for sale that were Westerlies still have this engine from that era, um, over half even, um, was a real testament to their durability and, and the fact that, well, maybe it's not the worst idea to buy a boat with a 40-year-old engine and it's been running really great for us. Parts are readily available out of the UK. I ordered some parts on a Friday once here in Western Canada and I have them at my house on Tuesday all the way from the UK. So the guy's really professional and really fast to get parts it's called Westfield uh, 4x4 and he's fantastic. Here is the aft cabin of the boat. Um, great engine access here and there's a double bunk. Um, so it's really, really nice for having guests aboard. They get a bit of their own private space. Private space. And there's a couple um, hang lockers right here as well as more storage down there. 
Moving forward, we have the head here. And it's pretty pretty basic. This does come up here, um, and it couldn't be you can set a shower up here if you want, um, but we never bother with that. It has a lavic head, which is um, not normal in or not regularly found in North America, but in in the UK I think they're they're fairly standard. But they're fantastic uh, toilets. There's a holding tank behind there and the valves to switch between a holding tank and overboard and to pump out. Um, a little mirror there and pressure water again. Um, there's, that's where you would be able to have a shower. There's a sump down there. Um, yeah. And a little port light, opening port light there. And then there's two hanging lockers here. Lots of room. There's another opening port light so you can let air into here. There's a hanging locker there. And then another hanging locker here. Um, connected with that light, that port light there. And this door here um, can close you off so that you have privacy up in the V-berth. And that leads us to the V-berth here. Again, pretty spacious. There's tons of room for two kind of average height people. Um, lots of storage again. There's all this storage in here. Um, storage up there. And opening port lights here. We're in uh, winter mode, so there's a tarp on top of the boat right now, but um, big opening hatch right here. And again, more storage. 170 liter uh, water tank is below the V-berth, um, which has pretty easy access to inspect it. And all the valves and stuff are just below it. Uh, moving forward here um, is access to the anchor locker. So you can quickly pop it open and be able to get inspect the chain. There's the chain piled up there, a bit dark. If there's uh, one misdesign on the Westerly, it's uh, the Westerly Discus and I think a few other uh, models of it, is that the anchor locker it doesn't start to drain until somewhat like something like six or ten inches of water has accumulated and then it drains down into the bilge which is that's fine but the fact that it lets six to ten inches of water build up means that the anchor uh, chain is just wet all the time um, so that's something i'm going to fix mostly be replacing the anchor chain soon because i believe it's the original and it's definitely showing its age okay so heading above deck here's ellis and alex on uh here in Princess Royal Channel, but this is the discus bridge deck version. This is the big bridge deck thing. And we got a Dodger here, um, chart plotter. And this little bridge deck zone's awesome because as soon as you got the sails up, um, you have to deal with the halyard, of course, right here. But once that's done, um, this whole area is sort of a no sail zone. So people that don't feel like sailing or want to be involved or new sailors, they can just hide out right here. Well, the action happens back here on all the winches and steering and everything. Um, this boat came with these nice davits here um, and a hydro vane, which I installed a while back. Um, we've been using a bit. It's been pretty fun to play with here and learned how to use it. Here's our little two-stroke um, Johnson. Goes with the dinghy really well. Barbecue. And... Heading up, we got uh, solar panels on both sides of the Dodger. They kind of stick up a little more um, than I really would really like, but I'm gonna probably find some 50 watt ones that'll cut off here instead and maybe add solar elsewhere so they're not sticking out like they are. But so far they actually haven't been getting caught on many ropes. We're just a bit cautious about that. Um, and for our trip here, we have these uh, jerrys of water and gas uh, strapped to the sides here, just since we're gonna be between ports sometimes. Got our Yeti style cooler that's been great. Ice has been lasting over a week, even just getting two chunks, so that's been wonderful. There's the chimney for the diesel heater, and up here is a little um, spot where we keep some of our um, gas and stuff, and then also the little diesel day tank, which has a pump right from the main tank. Lots of ventilation on the discus. There's uh, four door advents throughout here, and the other little vents elsewhere. This is uh, looking down into the V-berth, which I just slammed shut. Um, so great ventilation there. And we got the Maxwell HC10, I think it's called, uh, windless. It's got tons of power. I think it's meant for boats um, 35 to 50 or 60. So um, it's on the it's the big guy for this, but tons of power, which is great. And your usual Bruce anchor. Um, mega huge cleats on the discus, which I really like. And roller furling, of course, which has been really nice to have on this boat. But this is pretty much it. 
It's all covered in Treadmaster, which is, and apparently this is the original Treadmaster from 1979. So it's held up really well for 40 some odd years now. Um, yeah, so that's what the top side of this boat looks like. The reefing setup on this boat is quite nice. There's these cams here you can use. Um, there's a mast bottom uh, winch there as well. And these are the reefing lines here and they just pull on in and you just cleat off or put the uh, reefing points on here. And it only takes a couple, maybe a minute to do once you got it dialed. And there's lazy jacks here as well. This is uh, one of the original sails that came with this boat. I had it refurbished a bit. The uh, grommets were um, all worn out or all um, corroded, but I, uh, it turned out this one was in better shape than the um, sail that was actually already on the boat um, when I got it. So this is kind of cool. It's an old survey from 1983 when Seadree McLeod was in Scotland still. Um, it was used. They used a typewriter to re prepare this report here. Um, and it gives all the details. There's the same engine that's in it now from 1979, still running along. And something interesting in here, and it says right here in the survey, we understand that this was the first westerly discus built and there may be slight alteration from a particular vessel from the production run at a later date. I think um, on the other westerly discus, this wall wasn't here and this, this uh, L was seat shape wasn't here. So that's one minor difference I can see. Um, maybe some of the finishings are different. Um, any other discus owners watching this, I'd love to hear what is different about this guy. So that's the tour of this boat. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna be starting the trip to Alaska. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>